guys, how's it going? Laura with Garden Answer. In today's video, I wanna to talk to you guys about what you need to be doing with your perennials in the fall. So basically, whether or not you need to be worried about cutting them back now or waiting until spring, and there's really not a whole lot to it because basically the only perennials you need to be worried about cutting back in the fall are those that deal with insect and disease problems. Um, so let's talk though about perennials that you don't need to worry about cutting back. So um, when I'm talking about perennials, I'm talking like echinaceas, galardias, um, coreopsis, daylilies, there's just so, so many. And most of these perennials, if you leave them alone, leave the tops on the plants, they'll provide food and protection for wildlife, mainly birds in your garden. A lot of them add a really pretty visual interest to your winter landscape. So like ornamental grasses, sedum, um, echinacea seed heads, rudbeckia or black-eyed Susan seed heads look really beautiful in a snowy landscape. Um, and then when you do leave the tops on the plants, it also helps protect the crown of the plant. So um, a lot of times in those old branches, there'll be fall leaves that kind of catch in there and that helps moisture and it creates a layer of insulation over the crown of the plant, especially on those perennials that are kind of marginally hardy. So if you were to live in a zone five like I do and plant a zone six, just kind of like trying to fudge the line, uh, if you wait to cut that back to spring, it has a much better chance of surviving because of all that extra protection on the top. There are also a lot of perennials that are semi-evergreen or evergreen, like Lamium, Heucheras. I've got some couple Heucheras around me right now. Um, Dianthus, they're just ones that you don't really have to worry about doing anything to, except for in the spring, just tidying up, usually around the base of the plant. They'll have some old dried up leaves that you can clean up, but they'll already have beautiful leaves and they look beautiful all through the winter as well. And the best way to know what kind of perennial you have is first of all, read the tag um, or ask somebody at your local garden center before you plant it. But the very best way, in, in my opinion, is just to plant it. See what it does, leave it through the course of the first winter that you have it and see what it looks like. like if you plant a hookera and notice that it just keeps its beautiful leaves and it looks great through the winter time, then you know it's one of those plants that's a semi evergreen and you don't have to worry about cutting it back much. So let's talk about the perennials that you do need to worry about cutting back in the fall. And there's not that many of them, like I said, it's just those that you deal with insect and disease problems with. So I'm sitting in back of a big hosta right now that's not looking super great anymore, but these are notorious slug attractors and those slug eggs like to harbor over in old foliage. So if you remove all that foliage in the fall, then you just help not perpetuate that insect problem. Same with any kind of disease or fungal problems. If you deal with powdery mildew on any of your perennials, make sure to cut those ones back. So I deal with powdery mildew on Monarda, or it's also called bee balm, phlox and peonies in particular. So I make sure that I cut all of those back and discard the foliage. And if it's diseased from this year, I don't put it anywhere that I'm gonna save anything or compost. You wanna make sure that you either throw it away or burn it because you don't want any of that stuff hanging out for the following year. And the other perennials that you can cut back in the fall if you want to are just those that don't add anything visually to your garden. So there are some perennials that turn mushy or they just get really black and just don't look pretty at all. Go ahead and cut those back if you don't wanna look at that through the winter time, it's not gonna hurt anything. Um, and I used to be in the camp of cleaning everything up in the fall because I worked full time at the garden center at that time and so I didn't have time to do a huge massive spring cleanup um, when I was also working at the garden center. So it was better for me to do a fall cleanup when I had more time. If that's your situation, don't worry about it. Just go ahead and clean your garden up. Just know that on anything that's marginally hardy, make sure to leave those until spring, just kind of be a little bit selective. Um, and I'm kind of half and half now. I clean out about half the perennials and I leave half now because I do care about the birds and the wildlife and I want them to be in my garden. So if that's something that you want for your garden, then make sure to leave some of the perennials and so that your birds have cover and food for the winter time. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you how to cut back perennials. It's really easy. So what you wanna do is just gather your plant up into kind of a bundle. And then, oh, and look at that. You can see I've got slugs here. So this is what we're trying to eliminate in this spot. And then just make your cuts about an inch or so above the surface of the soil. So then I'm gonna put them here in my bag. This is a kangaroo pop-up bag. I love to use these out in the garden. Um, but I'm gonna make sure to actually throw these leaves away. I'm not going to keep them for compost um, because they may already have slug eggs on them and I don't want to perpetuate the slugs. So this is what it should look like. And the reason why I leave a little bit of stem is so that next year when I'm out here working, I can see where my plants are. 
So it's really not necessary to leave those stems because the new growth comes from underneath. It doesn't come from the old stuff but it is nice to be able to see exactly where all your perennials are. So that's basically it, you guys. I'm gonna be working in this area a little bit more. I've got some lungwort that looks still pretty nice, really pretty one right here. I've got some hookahs in here that I will leave until spring and then I'll just clean them up a little bit because these are a semi evergreen. And then there's just a few other things, some vinca, asters that are blooming, tradescantia and a daylily, just a random assortment of perennials that all still look pretty good except for the hostas that are behind me. So all of these right here, I'm gonna be working on cutting back. Everything else in this place, in this space though, I'll probably be leaving until spring. So that's it guys. I hope this video was helpful to you and we will see you in the next one. Bye.